Happy Walter Nolan visit weekend to those who celebrate. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and 10-year veteran as a member of the national media at Yahoo. Today, we talk about Walter Nolan and the Tennessee duo that just visited. As I mentioned, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College, all one word, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We're finally here. It's Walter Nolan visit weekend, apparently, and everybody is going to be hitting F five or F six or whatever that is. Refresh over and over on their computer. This is going to be an old t- old style type recruiting weekend, I think. I imagine Oxford is completely buzzing. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Ole Miss also had, was, what is it, um, a couple of players on campus. I think, let me get the name correctly real quick. Um, you had Camarion Franklin and Tyler Barham. Tamarian McDonald, sorry. Not Camarion Franklin. Tyler Barron and Tamarian McDonald also visited this week. I apologize for the name real quick. I had Tamarian Franklin on the brain because of what we're going to talk about in the third segment. But Tamarian McDonald, a defensive back from Tennessee. Tyler Barron is another rush in. And we're obviously, we're sitting back waiting to find out what is going to happen with Princely Uman Mielin. And we'll see exactly what happens with him as, you know, these transfer portal things can work, especially when you're dealing with the top rush in in the portal. But Tyler Barron is also visiting Ole Miss. Walter Nolan is a game changer. Absolutely. I'm not saying Ole Miss is going to get him. I'm not saying Ole Miss is not going to get him. I'm going to tell you what would happen if Ole Miss got him. He's a six foot five, 340 pound defensive end had four or five tackles for loss or sacks and probably 12 tackles for loss this season. Really good defensive lineman and an anchor on that Texas A&M unit that was so dominant during the season. Everybody was worried about that defensive line unit. It was because of Walter Nolan and how dominant he was. And knowing that and knowing what happened in one, and Ole Miss, is, Ole Miss had one game this season against Georgia. I know they lost to Alabama, but the one game where it was really apparent on the line of scrimmage was the Georgia Bulldogs game. They out-schemed Ole Miss, they out-talented Ole Miss, and they beat them up front offensively and defensively. Alabama was having trouble with the offensive line. Ole Miss was able to make some hay in that. Georgia kind of pushed the Ole Miss defensive line around. J.J. Pegues is a really good player. Jared Ivey is a really good player. But occasionally they were able to scheme some stuff up and win some one-on-one battles. And the offensive line was able to basically do whatever they wanted to do. Carson Beck did not have to get a grass. You did not have to wash Carson Beck's jersey after that football game. Nobody touched him. No tackles for loss in that game. And because of that, Lane Kiffin and Pete Golden are putting an emphasis on the defensive line. Absolutely major. And Walter Nolan is a huge piece of that. This is the greatest piece to ever enter the transfer portal in its short existence. Everybody is going to want Walter Nolan. It's probably not going to be over after the visit. It's probably not going to be over necessarily anytime quickly. Walter Nolan has until, what, February to enroll at Ole Miss. He can drag this out. This is not going to be a quick thing. Um, Princely, same thing. These transfer portal players, while this is a very quick thing, once the decision is made, they can kind of take their time and let it soak a little bit. There is no day to get things done. So knowing that 
and knowing that Ole Miss is swimming in these waters for defensive linemen, it's kind of interesting. Jared Ivey has already announced he's coming back, and so did J.J. Pegues. Cedric Johnson, it looks like, is going to the NFL. Um, he's going to play in the senior bowl, at least. Princely is probably slotted into that jack position. And if you saw him and have seen his highlights, which I'm sure most all Ole Miss fans have at this point, you can see exactly what he brings to the table as a rush in. There's rumors around crystal balls and things like that. Now, recruiting's a weird situation, and I hear different stuff. But the two things that I hear right now is somebody else is trying to get on the scene because anytime there's no information in a vacuum, it just gets filled with something, and you have no idea if it's true or not. But it also could be something as simple as we're waiting for the perfect graphic or something like that. Um, so we should see what would happen. He's crystal ball basically by everybody to Ole Miss, including um, Matt Zenitz, I believe, at 247, who is the transfer portal czar a little bit. So we'll see exactly how that goes. Good player. I, I, I'm still expecting Princely, honestly, until I hear something else. Somebody has to drop some new information before I change my tune, um, so to speak. And as I record this, it's like, 7 30 at night um so not a, there's a good chance that not a lot of news is going to break before tomorrow but who knows princely could release a graphic at 10 o'clock tonight and um it should be on by the time you watch this so who knows about all of that i'm not going to worry a lot about that but walter nolan next to princely and you put the defensive line uniform u- unit of princely jj pickies walter nolan and jared ivy you, and you're cooking a little bit You have potentially the best defensive line unit in the Southeastern Conference. A disruptive unit to be feared. Walter Nolan is going to be double teamed every single play. J.J. Pegues is going to be double teamed every single play. And you have that system that Georgia and Alabama has made a living off of over the last 15 years. And that is where the interior guys are so good, they have to be double teamed, leaving these ends to go hunt, and they're getting chipped, and they're being blocked by tight ends. And all of a sudden, the quarterback, instead of having two and a half seconds to throw the ball, he has two seconds to get the ball out of his hands. Bad decisions are made. It's easier to cover on the back end. RPOs aren't quite as effective. There's not a lot of third-level RPOs that can be run, all because that defensive line is a dominant thing. We're going to talk about uh, to Mary McDonald and um, Tyler Barron in the next session. We're going to talk about the transfer portal that Ole Miss has had throughout the first week of this process that's absolutely impressive, and we're just over the moon with how excited we are. I do want to apologize. This this show is a little bit less produced than a normal show because yesterday I had to go to the doctor and have my annual checkup just so everybody knows. All good news. They're going to move me from a year um, checkup to a six-month checkup because the tumor grew a small amount, but there's nothing to freak out about. We're going to be fine. They're just Anyway, I look at it as more people keeping an eye on something like that, the better. Um, So we're all in good place. We're all rolling, and hopefully starting next week, we kind of get back to normal. We start to get into game prep. We start to do the stuff that makes this channel great. And um, thank you, everybody, for your patience over the last week or so. Walter Nolan in town is a major piece of what I talked about earlier, about Ole Miss being a defensive line unit that is in that level. That That is something that, honestly, Ole Miss hasn't seen since the early 90s. Tim Bowens, Norman Hand. Those guys on the defensive line, that that is the type of defensive line that is in the offering with Walter Nolan and J.J. Pegues. You have Jared Ivey, and you have Princely, and potentially Tyler Barron. I mean, he has some big blue blood visits to go on, and he's planning on the top four of that. But Tyler Barron's a really, really good football player. Another one, just like Princely. You want to talk about a race a NASCAR package at defensive end. Imagine 
moving out and taking out a Walter Nolan and moving Jared Ivey in and your two outside ends, Tyler Barron and Princely Uman Mielin. That's a pretty big deal. And that allows the linebackers, and we're going to talk about that with the addition of Chris Paul in the next segment. This defense is methodically building to a level that surpasses what they were last year. And they were scoring defense-wise a top 35-level team, giving up about 23 points a game. Increasing the talent level at each level, both the defensive line linebackers and the defensive backfield, it's going to be a major, major deal for the Ole Miss Rebels. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. We're just getting started. It has been a massive first week in the transfer portal for Ole Miss. We are going to look at those that got brought in. Key Lawrence committed. We'll talk about that. What, what that means as well should be a lot of fun. Anyway, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Like if you're going to the Peach Bowl, it's going to sell out. The Peach Bowl is that weird bowl game that always seems to sell out of tickets. Always does. So it's a secondary market bowl game whenever you, the flip side is the Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl. You can pretty much buy tickets from the venue as it goes. Peach Bowl is not really like that. But getting close to the game and in the secondary market, it, it can be intimidating. That is why Game Time offers last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets of every kind in any kind of event in your area, honestly. Views from all the seats in the vid- venues so you can see exactly what you're walking into. They have all-in prices that show your total up front so you know what you're getting into with, um, with a great deal without hidden fees. And you can buy tickets in two set, two taps. Click, click. You're done. You have your tickets there, and they get delivered to your text message, not your email. And also with zone deals, you can pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats and for an average of 18% savings. That's a really cool deal. And the Game Time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. That's all one word. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and it's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering each and every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Man, it has been a fantastic week in the transfer portal for Ole Miss. I am very fired up. It kind of got kicked off with Chris Paul. Chris Paul, the number one linebacker in the transfer portal, committed to Ole Miss. And you talk about Ole Miss working through, rebuilding its defense, and getting it to a level that exceeds where it was in 2023, you can see the work that Pete Golding is doing. And in the transfer portal, this is something that's pretty cool. Everybody knows that I am a big big proponent of using the G5 schools as a de facto minor league system for Ole Miss. Go in and find a Trey Harris. Go in and find a John Saunders and bring them onto your roster. They can play. We know through data and stats through the NFL that players as low as D2 have been drafted fairly high. You can find good pieces with good evaluations. So if you trust them to evaluate, I don't think anybody needs to worry about that as well. But something interesting that is happening this year that's kind of different than, honestly, what we've all been expecting and that is Ole Miss is taking starters off of the Power 5 SEC-level teams and bringing those in. You have Chris Paul, who played at Arkansas. You have Tyler Barron and Tamari McDonald, who played at Tennessee. You had Princely Uman Mielin, um, who played at Florida. You had Key Lawrence, who just committed to Ole Miss, who went to Oklahoma. 
these type players, you have Lewis Moore that played at Indiana. Um, you have Taz Nicholson who played at Illinois. Power five schools, starters transferring into Ole Miss. And I talk about this all the time. This is because Ole Miss can recruit to the playoff. There's probably 20 teams in the country that can legitimately recruit to the playoff. Everybody else there just talking about a dream. Ole Miss has shown proof of concept. Ole Miss finished 11th in the playoff rankings this year. If there was a 12-team college football playoff, Ole Miss would be off in the horseshoe right now getting ready to play the Ohio State Buckeyes. That proof of concept is being shown to each and every one of these commits. Ole Miss has had returners come in from J.J. Pegues to Trey Harris to Caden Priestcorn to Jordan Watkins. We all assume that Jackson Dart's coming back. We all assume that Quinshawn Judkins is going to come back. All of that tells you the best playmakers from the 2023 team that won 10 games, you take a schedule that is by all accounts easier than what Ole Miss went through this year, and you improve different position groups, and it becomes the question, why not Ole Miss? Why not? If Ole Miss lands Walter Nolan and Tyler Barron and Prince Liamon Mielin, if Ole Miss lands all three of them, they have the best defensive line starters in the SEC. You pair that with a defensive line class that is consensus pretty much top five in the country, and you have a front-line defense that's kind of ready to go. Your linebackers, you upgrade it. You have Santarian Perkins sitting there ready to be the dude next to Chris Paul. Kari Coleman could come back. There's players all over the place. Ole Miss has recruited the top JUCO linebacker. There's players there. The JUCO route is important for Ole Miss this year. Even at wide receiver, where we talk about what's going on, Deion Smith is committed. Malik Willis is committed. Um, Nareel White is committed. So you will see position groups actually improve their talent level through these recruiting cycles. And honestly, that's what these recruiting cycles are supposed to be. That is what Lane Kiffin is supposed to do. That is what Pete Golding is supposed to do. And whenever you look at what they were playing against a more difficult schedule, going 10 and 2, the playoff is with all those players is not just a dream. The playoff conversation is real. A home game playoff game, which would be the biggest football game in the history of the state of Mississippi. I don't care what anybody says. You would have 300,000 people in Oxford, Mississippi, if, say, Oregon came into Oxford for a first-round playoff game. All of these are massive deals, and it starts with the work that Ole Miss is doing in the transfer portal. I saw a graphic right now, transfer portal signees. Ole Miss leads the SEC with five, or commitments, I should say, not signees. So that is a big deal. And with signing day Wednesday, okay, it's important to realize with signing day Wednesday, first of all, Ole Miss is going to basically put up this defensive line class with everybody, and they should. These guys are really, really, really good at football. But also, transfer portal-wise, they're going to want some stuff to talk about. They want some things to buzz. during As signing day gets closer, they want the press. They want something that takes over the news cycle. The signing day, the national signing day class, the early signing period, it's essentially, I'm not going to say over, but it's, you know, dripping. The water has been cut off and it's still dripping. I think there's a visitor that they're getting from the University of, that is a commit to the University of Miami. Anthony Maddox, we're going to talk about him in the next segment as well. I, th I think he's a possibility. He's really showing out at the Miss Out All-Star game. But all in all, getting ready for signing day, if you want a primer, if you want to get fired up, honestly, that's what it is. If you're an Ole Miss fan and if you want to get fired up, now is your moment, period. There's negatives that you can find if you look for them. There's warts that you can find if you want to find them. But those warts aren't causing lack of winning. Those warts aren't 
causing you to look at what Ole Miss was going through in 2018. My advice to everybody, and I'm not going to tell anybody how to be a fan. People who gatekeep and stuff like that, that's upsetting. But enjoy the next 12 months. No matter what happens after it, enjoy the next 12 months. Because honestly, next year is kind of here. All that wait till next year that Ole Miss fans have done for 40 years at least, and the whole time that I've been a fan, essentially, next year is here. And we'll see exactly how that goes as well. I'm pretty fired up about everything that's going on, and I think Ole Miss fans probably should be too. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. High school signing day is Wednesday, and Ole Miss is still working the high school ranks as we say, speak, why getting in the top two is the most important thing about high school recruiting. You like to land recruits. You'd rather have them than not. But in the top two with the way the transfer portal go, is going right now, that's kind of where you want to live with high school recruiting. You know, Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you versus the number. Instead of betting thousands or battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less than two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. Daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy? Yep, that's a thing. And testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into 250 bucks in just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit matchup to hundred dollars. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, all one word, for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every league. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. Be part of history. Now, Transfer Portal is all the rage, and like I said, happy Walter Nolan visit weekend for everybody that celebrates. We're going to be refresh. Oxford is going to be absolutely a buzz, but that isn't the only thing that Ole Miss is doing. And Kiwan Lacey, who for the longest time was crystal ball to Ole Miss, is going to Missouri. Um, he, that is where his commitment is. Good for the kid. Now, when it comes to a high school kid, I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's Dylan Riola. If he was um, sitting there committed to Ole Miss and Ole Miss lost him at the end, I would not lose sleep over that kid. Any high school kid, I'm not losing sleep over. Because the way that transfers work now and the way that it possibly could work coming out of this lawsuit means that you just try again next year or the year after or the year after. And they turn out, you can try out and go get them. And getting players in the transfer portal, Ole Miss has been extremely successful with. I know that people want high school recruiting because that's what they're used to. That's the way it's always been. But the NCAA game has changed a little bit, for better or for worse. NIL and the transfer portal, it is all different now. Um, Kiwan Lacey to Missouri, good football player. We'll see what happens and if Ole Miss will continue to recruit him well into his junior year or something like that. So we'll see exactly how that goes. The Mississippi-Alabama game is this weekend, tomorrow, in Hattiesburg. And this is an opportunity to see Camarion Franklin. This is an opportunity to see, I think, Nareel White and uh, and Anthony Maddox, the quarterback from Oak Grove, who by all accounts is showing out on the field. 
if you look at the players that are going to play in this game, I, I, I have a hard time thinking that Mississippi should be an underdog in this football game, even though it's an all-star game. There's some talent all over the field. If you want to see William Echoes play offensive line, which I don't understand that, but he's doing that down there. For whatever reason, you get to go see that. Um, Camarion Franklin, Cam Beavers, all those guys, um, I think, are down there in Hattiesburg. And it should be a good situation. And this defensive line for Ole Miss, Cam Beavers, Jeffrey Rush, um, Camarion Franklin, William Eccles, it's just defensive linemen after defensive linemen just stacking on each other. And if you look at what we started in the first segment of this video, you can see the progression that Ole Miss can make, okay? You can see that progression from a dominant upperclassman defensive line to a bunch of young guys that have a chance to be really good. Be excited about the defensive line prospects for Ole Miss. Be excited about the Grove Collective being a competent, good unit. Be excited about all the ways that Walker Jones is being progressive. Be excited about everything operationally right now that Ole Miss football is doing. Are you going to get every recruit? No. Are you going to lose every recruit? No. Are you going to be absolutely certain that Ole Miss is going to put their everything forward and not get beat because they just couldn't do it? Yes. They're going to do what they have to do. Kids are going to make different decisions, and that's the way it works. But I explained at the beginning of the segment what high school recruiting has become to me. High school recruiting has almost become about development. You get players in there that you want to develop. So your, your collection to can develop a relationship with, you can put them in your system, offensive line, defensive line. Those are development system, are positions of, essentially um, in today's football. You're going to go into the transfer portal and they're going to pay Walter Nolan potentially quarterback money um, and that's those are waters that Ole Miss can't make a living in. But right now they can do it because they don't need a quarterback. So we'll see exactly how this goes. Anthony Maddox, good player. Like I said earlier in the week, Anthony Maddox is a Jaden Daniels stylistic type player. Watch his huddle film. Watch what he does. He spins the heck out of the ball, has a really strong arm, and when he moves, he looks like Jaden Daniels. Now, he might not be running 23 miles an hour, but stylistically, they look like the same type player. So we'll see through development. No miss in the quarterback room right now. It's Jackson Dart, Walker Howard, Austin Simmons. Anthony Maddox is coming in to be the number four guy in an already stacked quarterback room. So we'll see exactly how that goes as well. I'm really, really excited. I'm really excited about the Walter Nolan visit this weekend. The Tyler Barron news, I'm going to be refreshing about that. All the Blue Bloods want him to marry McDonald. That's a safety that could go with Key Lawrence. There's a lot of players showing up in the transfer portal for visits that are extremely high-level football players. And honestly, Ole Miss fans should start to get excited about the talent that is coming on campus. Anyway, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day, there's Tom Vanderford and Josh Guest will be around this weekend, along with Brian Smith, as we push towards signing day Wednesday. For your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stor sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. For your second listen, Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports stream channel. For those on you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Hotty toddy.